In this video, we will be creating a copy of the periodic table of Office 365 from scratch in Jump to 365 Pro. So the goal here is for you to be able to see exactly how we would build this exact table and give you some ideas on how you can play around and make your own versions uh, and just totally make from scratch um, other creative solutions using the uh, Jump to 365 Pro table canvas. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm already logged into Jump to 365 Pro. I'm going to bring up my ribbon and I'm going to create a new table. So let's call this the demo. Okay, I'm going to enable the edit tiles mode. So I have the uh, editor interface here. Uh, this table is actually 10 by five. So I have to make sure I have enough columns and rows. So this is enough rows, but I think I need more columns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And adding columns is super easy. Just hover over the top here and I can add two more columns. And from here, I'm going to start adding the group tiles and the app tiles. So the first thing I have to do is create uh, my first app tile, uh, just so I can give myself a, you know, kind of a, an idea of where I am. Uh, the first column is actually going to be the group tiles that are on the left side that identify uh, file storage and collaboration, Outlook, and um, conferencing. So it's actually the second column is where the first co uh, column of apps are. So I'm going to choose a type here and I'm going to call it uh, app tile. And this one is Dynamics 365. So that's what I'm going to put in here. I do not have a subtitle for this one on that one, but it is a CRM and ERP. And I like to compare it to Salesforce for those that need the comparison. And let's see, the URL is great. Uh, we have a copy of the Dynamics icon. So I'm going to grab the white one and I'm going to put it on a background that matches the brand color. And the hex code for this is 5234E. Perfect. Uh, we will add an article a little bit later for that, but for right now, I'll keep it there. Um, status uh, for hashed, I don't have a need for hashed for this one. And for features, this is partly shareable. So I'm gonna click update. And now I have my Dynamics app uh, already included there. So I will now go through and identify all of the other apps through this. Now with the next few apps, I'm gonna be using the copy function to make a copy of an existing app tile and then add those in for the other three apps that are part of Outlook. They have a lot of similar features, same background color, things like that. So it's a nice little way to save some time as you're building out your tables. This is the first app that I'm actually adding a subtitle to, and that's the fact that it's deprecating. So a lot of the features or all the features of Kaizala are actually moving into Microsoft Teams, but it is a separate application and it's good to know 
uh, what the status is for that. Okay, and the last app that I'm going to be adding here is Staff Hub. I actually do not have Staff Hub's icon uh, preloaded, so this will be a good example to show you how to upload an icon, a custom icon for any of your apps. This is also deprecating and moving fully into Microsoft Teams. That being said, it does still exist, so we'll just go from there. Okay, so I'm going to click Upload, and I will choose a file from my desktop, and I will choose Staff Hub White. Upload that, and I will return. So now we got the, uh, the S there. Okay, so that does it for all of our apps at this point. Uh, so now I'm going to do the groups. And we will connect all the ones with lines and make sure that when you hover over the group name that the app tiles will uh, be featured or, or fade away based on what, uh, what groups that they're in. So for the first column on the left, uh, what I'm going to do here is, because I want to make sure these all line up. Now, if I, if I leave the editing process here, you'll see that there's going to be a lot of shifting. So that looks terrible. Uh, so what happens is we actually have to place in some spacers here and there to match up with the size of the tiles that actually exist. So on the left side here, I'm going to make um, a vertical spacer because that's going to line up with the left groups underneath it. And same here for stream, next to stream. And now we'll actually make our first left group. And this one is file storage and collaboration. Okay, so we have our first group completed. And on the right side, we're gonna use a right group because that's gonna be pointing to the right. Uh, the impact on whether you choose left or right uh, dictates which way the text is rotated. So left group, the text is rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise, and the right group, the text is rotated 90 degrees clockwise.
Okay, now we're moving into our first uh, inside groupings as well. So I'm going to go forward with adding the Forms group. And this is to the right of Delve and to the left of Forms Pro. So we're going to add a left group here because that's how I want the text rotated. Now this next one is actually between two. It's gonna to connect to both of them. So I'd still use a left group. I can actually make the connecting lines cross through this if I need to, but this comes down to how I want the text to be rotated. So I'm going to choose a left group. And this one is tasks. Okay, and we have one top level group that we use in this table. Excellent. So let's make the connections now between these groups and the correct apps. So the way to do that is we need to leave the, uh, the tile editor and we need to open up the edit connections mode. So at this point, this everything is saved by itself. Uh, this is an autosave platform. So I'm going to click edit tiles. Again, the a line up here is not going to look great but that doesn't really matter for right now. We're gonna click Edit Connections, and I'm going to do the first one. You'll see if I hover over any of these groups, there are no connections yet. Everything just fades out. But for the first one, I will click this, and I will choose SharePoint, OneDrive, Delve, and I will add the lines in between them. So they're not only connected by the fading, but they're also connected by lines. And then I will click the name of the group to turn off that group editing, and now you can see that if I hover over that, it covers those three. Okay, so we made our connections. They should all be fading and showing. Excellent. So we will close that. And now because uh, the lineup is really, really ugly, we don't have a title yet, we have to do a couple other things. So I'm gonna go back into the edit tile mode and I'm going to add one more tile spacer here and then I'm going to add our title. So the title, is an image that you have to upload. So you'll create this yourself. And I can upload from a file that I have here. And I will save that, and it's right here. We will leave the overlap tile here as a none, basically a blank, so it's a spa uh, not a spacer so much as literally just blank. And then this is a spacer. This remains where it is. This needs a spacer right here. And there we go. So that is the table created from scratch. And from here we can do something like adding articles, right? So if you click on one of these things, you want an article to pop up. I have one already written and I'll just use this one as an example, but you can go significantly further and add them to each. So in this case, I'll click on the edit tiles and I will click edit for OneNote. So I happen to have a OneNote article. And I'm just gonna paste this in from where I had it before. And we have, some pl uh, we have plenty of formatting options in here. So I will make some quick formatting updates. Okay, so we now have an article there and I will uh, Turn off editing mode for this, and now I should be able to click this and it'll bring up the article. You can also see on the right side that you get a full, or a uh, sort of a live view of what the table looks like in a small format on the right, and then all the groupings of this app is in. So if you're an app that uh, is in a couple different ones, let's go back, we can see 
perhaps PowerPoint. Now this doesn't have an article, so it's blank right now, but you'll see that it's listed as both being in Office Online and under the presentations, which I think is good. And we can go back here. Now, this is only so useful uh, to you. It, it needs to be shared out with everybody else. So once you are finished and you're ready to go, you can click the Publish tab, and then there's a Publish button right here. And you can go ahead and click Publish. And once the publisher is done, you will be provided with a link. So go ahead and click Get Link, and you can copy it. This is the link that you will be sharing with other people. So this is something that is available to anybody with the link. And I'm just creating a new tab so you can see what this looks like when it loads up. And it's uh, not editable. This is basically a view-only version of it. Now if I go back to the other tab, and I click Close here, uh, we have a couple sharing options. You can copy this link and you can also use that link for embedding, say into something like SharePoint Online or your uh, Office 365 help site, that kind of thing. So you can have it built right in and have it right there as a launch pad for you for later on. So that is how you create the periodic table of Office 365 from scratch using Jump to 365 Pro. And of course, for more information, subscribe to our channel to get the latest tips and tricks on building the launch pad to your modern workplace.